Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Julia. We are two high school best friends and college roommates with an interesting dynamic. And we are here to culture each other on different aspects in pop culture. We talk about all things music, movies, musicals, Disney, and more. This is Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Hello. Hello, and welcome back. Yes, welcome back to episode nine of nine. Pop Culturing. It is episode Pop nine. Culturing My Best Friend. Pop Culturing. <laughs> so, we're going to get started with nonsense news first. Yes. Would you like to go? Sure. Sure. Awesome. So, first piece of news mm-hmm. is that the Netflix original Selena the Series Part 2 has officially announced to come out May 4th. It was scheduled to come out May 15th, but they pushed it up. So now it'll come out May 4th. Um, I'm a big Selena fan. And um, I watched the first part of the series and I was very underwhelmed and it made me very sad i'm hoping for more in the second part because that's kind of where we like get into the juicy you know what i mean yes see um yeah so that's gonna come out i'm hoping for better than part one (laughs) okay my next piece of news is that uh fearless comes out (laughs) at midnight tonight May 9th. April. Not April. April. Whoa. <laughs> I'm dumb. Uh, it comes out April 9th at midnight. And I'm very excited. And that is all I will be doing on Friday. Besides going to the chiropractor. Um, <clears throat> so yes. I'm very excited. The songs I'm most excited for. Uh, White Horse. Hype for that song. Okay. Another song I'm excited for is You're Not Sorry. Great song. Love that song. Another song I'm excited <laughs> for is Forever and Always piano version. Because I song I'm excited for. Because, because <laughs> I prefer that version over the regular version. Hmm. Yes. Okay. It's much more... Because the regular version is very, like, hype. Uh-huh. And I love, like... Because it, it, it's a heartbreak song, you know? Yeah. But the slowed down version, oh, it just gets you, oh, you know? Yeah. Um, so very excited about that. And the last piece of news I have is still related to T-Swizzle. Um, <laughs> Wednesday morning, without any announcement whatsoever, she released oh, yeah. another single from the vault. <laughs> I woke up in the morning and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> where did this come from uh so mr perfectly fine was released it's another song about joe jonas and uh joe jonas's wife um actually shared it on her instagram page and her and taylor Swift had a cute little banter over instagram but oh they God, love God. each other so yeah it okay. was a good time it's a good song 10 okay. out of 10 recommend all right, so um, this Monday I gave my second speech in speech, and I actually got a good grade. So, yay! Yay! I was nervous. I have another speech coming up in a couple weeks. So, yay! But yay! Yes, cool. Um, so our concert, um, the Chamber Music concert, was on Tuesday. Um, and you can still check it out if you missed it on demand at streaming.trevecca.edu. So you should look at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this Sunday, the 11th, is Marty and I's three-year anniversary, which is whack. That's a long time. <laughs> it both feels like it was like yesterday and also my entire history of being in life. So that's interesting. <laughs> so, Yeah. That's exciting. Woohoo. Mm-hmm. That's all I got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is all I have because. I mean, this could be a joint news story. The Build a Bear Animal Crossing uh, collab happened, and that was a storm on Twitter and everything. Yeah. People were angry. <laughs> I wasn't angry because I didn't really care in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was just kind of like 
disappointed. Right. Same. Not be- not because of how other people were disappointed, though. Oh, Every- okay. Everybody was disappointed because they only did Tom, Nook, and Isabel. But I knew they were going to do that. Same. That- We've like, been discussing it for a while. We were hoping maybe for KK or Blathers as well, but they just did- stuck with two. Yeah. So, like, I knew that it was going to be yeah. that. No, I was disappointed by the design. I-, I didn't like it. A lot of people say they look like creepy mascot suits. Yes. I, thought, I, I agree with that. I thought Tom looked like he was stung by several Tom bees. looks like he's high. Yeah, but Isabel was all right. Isabel... I think she's cute. ...was high on something else than Tom Nook. <laughs> so. so, that happened, and people are very angry, and people were hoping that they would release more of the actual characters that people want um, mm-hmm. over the summer. They announced that they are releasing one more new villager over yeah. the summer. So, we're assuming it's probably going to be KK next. Yeah. Um... Because people found, I don't know how we all did it this fast, but just it, within that short segment of the morning before they came out, people were looking up villagers' names on the build a website, and it was taking them to the Animal Crossing page. So there's, like, a like a list of, like, 13 or so yeah. that people figured out are, like, ooh, these ones take us to the Animal Crossing page. Oh, no. And KK was one of them, so I'm pretty sure he's coming next. Yeah. I think because people were so angry and it didn't sell as well as they thought it would, they probably won't make any more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which would be sad. <laughs> um, again, they should have partnered with Squishmallows instead. Yeah. I mean, even the Pillow Pet collection would have been good, too. Yeah. Uh, it would have been a smarter business move. Yeah. So. Ooh. All right. Now <laughs> that's all we have. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dang. All right. So, up next, we have Walt Lily World. Ding. Ding. <laughs> so, um, my stories today aren't that interesting, but they're all, like, there. There is an announcement at the end that's cool. Disney needs to step up their game. <laughs> well, you need to hire me as their marketing team. I got team. my stories earlier than I usually would. Usually I'd wait oh, till yeah. uh, to last night or this morning to get newer things. But yeah. So this is all kind of old, but... So, um, because of the Rona, um, there hasn't been any, like character meet and greet like meet and greets and yeah. or parades they have little character cavalcades where a couple little floats will go through with characters on them and they'll just go through yeah i saw something about that on tiktok yeah. yesterday so um mulan and moana were finally added to the character cavalcade so they're gonna be with the princesses now which is nice so it's good to see more characters nice. and they're also gonna have socially distanced meet, meet and greets now so there are a couple of characters who do that already um but that's cool so yay Wait, okay i have a question Yes. Because I know this about Disney. They, to be an official Disney princess, mm-hmm. you are, like, there's, like, an actual coronation that goes on. Oh, wow. So, the last princess I know of that oh, they coronated yeah. okay, I know you was, know. which came first, Merida or Tangled? Oh, gosh. Um... It was one of those. I'm pretty sure it was Merida who came who was the last there one. There was one more princess who got coronated after them. It was um the one from the TV show, like, Elena of Avalor. She got her coronation. Oh, I forgot about her. No, I was wondering if Moana ever got coronated. I don't think she did. I don't think she's technically a Disney princess. Okay. But she, like, is in the Disney princess lineup. Kind of like okay. how, like, Elsa and Anna aren't Disney princesses. Yeah. But I think Moana's more of a Disney princess than they are question mark yeah because well yeah there's a film theory episode about it mm-hmm. about how frozen is basically just their own franchise yeah so um um yeah i th- i don't think i think pocahontas mulan and moana aren't technically princesses but they're part of the disney princess lineup okay yes okay yeah yeah because they aren't like print like actual like royalty royalty right. so yeah. but did they have a coronation I don't think they <laughs> did. Okay. So, next story is um, dealing with the same kind of, like, COVID things are, like, moving forward. Um, you're now able to take your mask off for, like, official Disney photo pass pictures, which is nice. Because when we were there last time, we didn't get photo pass because, like, when they would take your picture, all you could see is, like, your mask anyway. So, like, mm-hmm. why pay extra when you can take your own pictures? So, now you can. Um, you have to, like, stand in a certain place and, like, you know... It's, Mm -hmm. like, a whole ordeal. But now you can take a good picture. So that's nice. Um, My next story is um, dealing with the Cinderella Castle. Um, The first turret decoration was added um, recently, this this past week. 
Um, so the 50th anniversary decorations are moving along nicely and it's looking so pretty and I'm really excited to look at it um, when it's done. Um, next story is kind of a sad one, um, but also I guess kind of a good one as well. So the Jungle Cruise is getting its big refurbishment that we talked about a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a character on the Jungle Cruise named Trader Sam. And he's a, like like a very, very popular, like not like Disney like character, but you know what I mean, like a Disney ride character that people know. And he even has his own like, um, I think like a, a bar or something um, called Trader Sam's. Um, so people are upset because he was finally removed from the Jungle Cruise. Um, you don't know who Trader Sam is. Trader Sam no. is a shrunken head salesman. Uh, and he had his deal, like, one of, uh, two of my heads for one of yours. Uh, and it was like, you know, like, the Jungle Cruise is supposed to be all jokes and puns and funny stuff. So that was supposed to be the joke, two of my heads for one of yours. But they finally got rid of Trader Sam, which makes sense. Yeah. People are really sad about it because he was funny. Do you think instead of getting rid of him completely they could have just changed what he was selling yes that is what i would have liked to also see. your towel 100 percent just moved and it freaked me out that is like horrifying. it didn't fall it just like straight up moved i hate that <laughs> Ew. <laughs> um so yeah i would have liked to see them do something else with him as well but um right now the area where he was is covered in like a tarp so I think this is where one of the new scenes is going to be. I think this might be the monkeys. They could have done a cool fruit pun. Yeah. I love a good fruit pun. Ugh. Well, rest in peace, Trader Sam. You will be missed, but also not. <laughs> um, so then my last story is um, actually a universal story. Um, the Jurassic World v Velocicoaster is officially opening on June 10th. And my dad's gonna be really sad about that because we were hoping um, it would be open. What's the Velocicoaster? The Velocicoaster is a new coaster um, in the Jurassic Park area uh -huh. um, that looks terrifying, and I will not be partaking in the Velocicoaster. Um, it's I don't know. It's supposed to be like one of the fastest rides in the park, or like ever, or whatever. I'm not even sure. That one makes sense. Um, because Veloc Velociraptors. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, um, some of the drops look scary. I think it has a couple of, like, um, like upside down, like, inversions and stuff. So um. it's not my thing. But we were hoping it would be there because we're going, um, like, just the week or two before. <laughs> so, oof. Um, yeah. So I think that's all I have. Ow. Do you have any final thoughts or anything, Dad? Um, no. I don't cool. think so. Awesome. All right. So that is all for Walt Lily World. <laughs> Ding. Next, we have repeated. Them. Repeated. Them. <laughs> I was about to skip over that. So <laughs> I'm big dumb. Okay. Um. So for repeat of the week this week, mm -hmm. I was gonna do a Taylor Swift song. I'm gonna hold off on that until next week because next week I'm gonna be talking about her a lot. Yeah. So. Um, last week I talked about how Olivia Rodrigo was releasing a new song mm -hmm. and it has been released and through this song she has proved she is no one hit wonder for this Real. song is very good. It is. Uh, the song is called Deja Vu and it's basically about, um, so Olivia is like this ex-girlfriend and she's finding out like all these things her ex is doing with this new girl and she's like wait but we did all those things together are you yeah. just reusing the same material what the heck yeah it's yeah. a really good song yeah i like it a lot her vocals are very good um the bridge people are comparing it to the bridge in taylor swift's song cruel summer from mm -hmm. the lover album and i love the bridge of that song so like it's great i love it um so oh here are some Ooh. standout lyrics that I enjoyed. My favorite lyric of the entire song. Watching reruns of Glee, being annoying, singing in harmony. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite song. Also, it kind of made me sad. Because after I listened to the song, I found out Olivia Rodrigo has never watched Glee before. What? <laughs> Wait, she really? put it in her song. Yes. That's weird. She said, she said, um, I just put this in here because it seems like the most musical theater-y thing to put in there. 
<laughs> and I'm like, honey, you would love Glee. That's Give really it a funny. chance. Um, and then some more lyrics are, so when are you going to tell her that we did that too? She thinks it's special, but it's all reused. Yeah. So, yeah. That's all I got. Okay. Just stream it. Listen to it. <laughs> so um, I'm doing another Vocaloid song, but this one's in a different kind of like genre. So this is more of like a rock Vocaloid song. And there are some really good covers of it, but um, I have to stick with the classic, which is Miku's version, of course. Just, just for this purposes. I don't really listen to her, her songs anymore. Um, so this is called Love is War, um, and it's by Rio or Supercell. So this is a really, really popular um, vocal aid producer. Um, and this song is another one that's got a story. And the original video actually has um, an animated, like, kind of video to go along with it. Um, rather than just, like, some pictures and words, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, this song is basically about a girl who's trying to win the love of her crush who's in love with someone else. (gasps) Is she Eponine? Oh my gosh! (laughs) I mean, she might as well be. Um, so, she's basically going to war, and she's gonna fight for this guy no matter what. Um, so, she's standing, in the video, she's standing at the top of this really tall tower. Eponine goes to war. Oh my god. She's standing at the top of this really tall tower that's got megaphones all over it. And she's holding a megaphone and she's screaming at this dude. Like, hey, I'm here. Like me instead. She's very sad. Um, so the song opens with, um, my favorite part of the song is the first, um, the very first line. And it's, now there's nowhere to go, the heat of this love. And then she stops for a second and then she just screams into the microphone. She's frustrated. And I love me it. Too. Um and then a little bit later throughout the song, um, she's like yelling into this microphone and he, uh, the, the megaphone, and he can't hear her. So she just throws it on the ground and it shatters. And it's like really cool, um, especially in the video. So she talks about like the megaphone I tried shouting and was broken. Um, I would fail to get into your sight. Um, so throughout ha- about halfway, almost to the end of the song, she like kind of breaks down and she's like, I couldn't get a hold of my feelings. How can I? What can I? I'm crying. No, I'm not. I love you. And she's just like over it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's cute. And then she um, ends the song just screaming at him still. So yeah, we never know what happens to the girl. We don't know if she gets with this guy. Um, she gets shot in war. Oh, no. And well, then actually, she sings a song in the rain. In the video, she sends all these airplanes at him, and like one of the airplanes does get shot. So we don't really know what happens. Um, and she said that she, uh, she says at the very end, the last line is that she'll only be awakened by your kiss, and it's sad. So we don't know what happens to her. Mm-mm. Sounds very middle school angst. Yes, that's what I, was, <laughs> I, I told Julia earlier. This is one of the songs that's like I'm 14 and this is deep because. Um, <laughs> And I have been in a similar situation. <laughs> I have been 14, and this was deep. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so yeah no, is... the, if you would have given this to me, like, 8th grade, <laughs> freshman year, I probably would have been all over it. <laughs> and I totally was. Yeah, this is a Vocaloid classic, so this one came out a long, long time ago. And it's a staple that they use in concerts and stuff nowadays still, because it was uh. so popular. So yeah, this came out several, several years ago. Nice. Yeah. So that's all I got. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Next week will be Taylor Swift week. Oh no. (laughs) Prepare yourselves. (laughs) Today's episode of Waving Through a Musical (laughs) Window is a special one. Um, We are transitioning away from the Broadway stages and we are going to go to the YouTube stages. The YouTube stages. In California, yes, uh, which was where this one was filmed. So, this week's musical is Star Kid's own "The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals." Yes, let's read a synopsis. How have you plagued my life with this? <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Let us read a synopsis. "The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals" is a 2018 musical by Team Star Kid. Shook. 2018? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Ew! <laughs> um, oh, I almost started reading the synopsis for the movie. Okay. <laughs> Their 11th musical, it is an original work written by Nick and Matt Lang with music by Jeff Blim. 
The story centers around Paul, a guy who does not like musicals. He and his friends are forced to survive in a world that is slowly becoming a musical, with people spontaneously singing and dancing in syn- synchronization. Synchronization? Yes. <laughs> what a word. Um, this musical is so good. It's hilarious. It's um, funny. It's dark, which I love. Yes. The, my two favorite things. Funny and dark. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man i can't believe it came out in 2018 same wow <laughs> yeah so this is part of um a series that they're creating the, yeah the hatchet, the hatchet field. field series so yes. the musical takes place in this town, town called hatchet field and since this musical it was the dawn of a new age yes and was. they created a uh, the Black Friday musical, which also takes place in Hatchafield and Nightmare Time. Nightmare Time is three different episodes with uh, two different stories in each episode. Yes, and that... It's all characters from the Hatchafield universe. Yeah. So, yeah. And what's really cool is that like we don't know what Hatchafield is. No. Because it is timelines and all kinds it of is garbage everywhere. Insane. It's a mess. We got clones, we got dancing aliens Robots, we got aliens. evil dolls we oh wow yeah we have webby which <laughs> webby. we don't even know what webby is webby's a spider well yeah but like she's like webby's a spider like witch interdimensional like spider <laughs> being witch like what is that so we sound insane yes. um but 10 out of 10 recommend watch the guy who didn't like musicals and then black friday and then all three nightmare time episodes are now available on youtube oh man I, it's a time <laughs> it's a nightmare time um yeah i love but the guy who didn't like musicals is the one that started it all yes um it is the one that gave us um our boy our girl mariah rose faith yes um john <laughs> this is his first musical i don't know how to pronounce his last name uh it also we got more of a look at um What's Professor Hitchens? Robert. Robert. Yeah. I'm so sad I forgot his name. I love Robert. <laughs> um, yeah, this is his first, like, big role oh, in a man. Star Kid musical. Was it a role? <laughs> man. All right. So what is your dream role? Oh, gosh. Um, this was hard. We had cast all of ourselves in a character in this yes. a long time ago. Um, so I said either Charlotte or Emma because, mm-hmm. you know, that's what I'd be stuck in <laughs> There's really no breaking out of that. But Ted's my favorite character. So oh, if I, I could will. be Ted, I would be Ted. I love Ted. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my like dream role that I want to play is like Alice, Zoe, Greenpeace yes. Girl. Anybody Mariah Rose Faith plays. Um, yeah. I love Mariah. I'm obsessed with her. Uh, and I can sing her parts in the show. So. Mm-hmm. But... My favorite character is Professor Hitchens. Oh my gosh, if you could... Ah, that would be so funny. I know. It'd be great. Um, okay, so what are your favorite songs? My favorite songs... This was hard, by the way. Yes, all of the songs are bops. They're, I don't. I can't think of a single song I don't like or that I would skip Same. if I was listening to it. Same. Um, yeah, so we have um, Not Your Seed. I love Mariah's vocals in that song. I'm obsessed. Mm-hmm. That's um, a good one. A show-stopping number. Of course. Obviously. If it's not on your list, then you aren't watching it right. <laughs> <laughs> and la di da da day Okay. So we have two of the same ones. Nice. Um, so la di da da day is on my list, then a show-stopping number, because duh. Um, and my last one is join us and die, because oh, that's it's so song. catchy. <laughs> yeah. Man, what a great show. Yeah. So general thoughts. Um, this show we watch with all of our friends in a fort um on my birthday on your birthday and it was a grand old time and then black friday as well now nightmare time we were not with our peoples we were not which is so sad college and uh, they haven't seen nightmare not yet i know it's so sad so what are we gonna do so we we got our food for the day we sat on the floor and we watched nightmare time which yeah. you paid for tickets I, to watch it early oh yes because <laughs> when it first came out it was not available on youtube Mm-mm. you had to go to the star kid website and pay eight dollars to watch it 
so we um, binged the nightmare so i awesome. paid my dues and yeah. i watched nightmare time because i was like Mm-mm, i'm not waiting Mm-mm. six months to watch nope this. <laughs> but it is now as of like a few weeks ago available on yeah youtube mm-hmm. so uh they did cut a part out of it they did oh yeah. they did <laughs> <laughs> oh, they did. They really did. <laughs> Which I'm very glad they did. Oh, man. But at the same time, I'm kind of sad. Yeah. I wish other people got to experience the, the horror. The um, horror. <laughs> we, I was crying. You cried. I, we were on the ground. It was an experience. So, <laughs> like, I didn't like musicals. Like, I didn't like musicals. It's funny. It's so It's good. really funny. Oh, man. Um, yeah. It's like it's just worth watching. Just I think this is the musical where um I got most of our friends into Star Kid. Yes. So I feel like this is a very good like entrance into yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Star Kid series because they have a lot of good shows. All the Harry Potter musicals <laughs> with Darren Chris, um uh, Trail to Oregon. Trail to Oregon's my favorite. Twisted. I love Twisted. That one's I remember when probably you my that. favorite. Um, what else is... Um, I can't I think. Oh, gosh. Um, Firebringer. A Firebringer. Um, uh, <laughs> my brain doesn't work anymore. I know there are more. Yeah. But... Oh, I was about to say one, but that's not... <laughs> that's not Trebekah appropriate. Um, yeah. Good musicals, great songs. Jeff Blim is an amazing songwriter. Oh, like that smile. what the heck? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jeff Blim is scary, but I love him. Um yeah, ten out of ten recommend. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It was hilarious. Go check it out. It's free on YouTube. So Yeah. Why wouldn't you check it out? Right. <laughs> um that's I it. think that's all I have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> cool we're gonna take a break and then we'll be back with the movie yes a very Joey. exciting movie so exciting <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the movie review. Yes. This week. Movie review. I am ready. So. I feel like that was a reference to something, but I don't know what it was. Some people will understand. (laughs) Movie review. So today we are reviewing the best movie to ever cross this planet. Well, Um, debatable. debatable, But it is a good movie. It's wonderful. (laughs) Um, It is the the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. The SpongeBob SquarePants movie. movie. Uh, 2008? Is that when this came out? I think it was. Let me scroll and check. 2004. 2004? 2004. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Let me give you a synopsis. (laughs) In this lively animated adventure, out an undersea oddball SpongeBob SquarePants and his starfish friend Patrick embark on a quest to clear the name of Mr. Krabs, the owner of the Krusty Krab restaurants, who has been framed for stealing the crown of the ocean deity King, King Neptune. Neptune. Leaving the familiar confines of Bikini Bottom, SpongeBob and Patrick venture out towards Shell City, where they hope to find Neptune's crown. But numerous obstacles stand or float in their way. (laughs) That's cute. Okay. Yes. So this movie is excellent. This movie is very good. Mm, I have lots of memories of watching this movie with my brother. Um, Oh, yeah. Yes. Let us get get into it. We open on... A pirate crew. A pirate crew. A live-action pirate crew. Is this even a SpongeBob movie? I don't know. What are they... They spot a boat in the distance. Who could it be? They bring him on board. He has a treasure chest. What could be inside? Tickets to the SpongeBob movie. movie. Yes. <laughs> so uh, these pirates are going to go see the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Absolutely. And they sing the theme song in yes. celebration. Woo. I love this rendition of the theme song. It's so fun. It's so much fun. And they finally arrive to the movie theater yes. and they sit down to watch the front row the and movie. they're ready to watch the movie yep. why would they sit in the front row though i don't know i have sat That's in like the worst seat <laughs> i have sat in the front row in a movie before and it is not very fun yeah all right so 
It's time for the movie. It's time for the movie. SpongeBob is. We open up on the Krusty Krab. Yes. But wait, there's police surrounding the Krusty Krab. What's going on? <laughs> SpongeBob is. This this is like one of the, my favorite SpongeBob moments. Um, <laughs> he is hilarious. So um, there's police around the Krusty Krab, and we're like, oh no, what happened? And Mr. Krabs comes out. He's like, the customer received a Krabby Patty with cheese. But it did not have cheese on it, and it was, like, this big deal. Um, so SpongeBob steps out this car with his cowboy boots, and he marches on in to the Krusty Krab. And he sits down with this guy, and the interview that follows is hilarious. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any notes about it? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> so SpongeBob is, like, talking to this guy. He's, like, a, like... The guy's like, I have a wife and kids. He's like, good. That like that's the good stuff right there. And that's what it's all that's about. That's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> and he ends the interview by like pointing something at this guy and saying, Say cheese. And then he puts cheese on his Krabby Patty. And that is how we open this movie. Yes. What um, an adventure already. So they start cheering for SpongeBob, but the cheers are strange and they sound like an alarm. <laughs> and SpongeBob wakes up from his dream. <laughs> yes. So, real Spongebob, uh, as, as much as I wish that the other Spongebob was real Spongebob, um, he wakes up and he is super excited because he wants to be the manager of the new up-and-coming Krabby Patty 2. Krusty Krab 2. Krabby Patty. <laughs> Krusty Krab 2. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so, Spongebob, like, he's like, Psh, I'm going to be the new manager. Like, yeah. there's no doubt about it. And everyone's excited. Um, everyone's like... Spongebob's gonna be the manager. Patrick knows that Spongebob's gonna be the manager. He is ready. He's always ready, but he is exceptionally ready today because he is gonna be the yes. manager and he's ready to rub it in Squidward's face. Yes, we go through Spongebob's morning routine. Yes. And um, <laughs> he showers. And he and... showers with Squidward. Before he showers with Squidward, <laughs> he eats soap and then he plugs himself into a hose. Um, yeah. And that's interesting. So Spongebob showered twice. Yes. Cleanliness is close to managerialness. Um, so oh, Spongebob yeah. is changing. He puts on his pants and the back flap of his pants falls down and we see Spongebob's butt. This is the first of many butts in this movie. Um, <laughs> and Spongebob is dummy thick. Um, so Spongebob um, goes to Squidward's house and he's in the shower. And Spongebob is also in the shower. Um, Why? <laughs> Why? Yeah. I mean, Squidward does say, like, why couldn't you just tell me at work? And then Squidward, uh, and then Spongebob says, there's no shower at work. <laughs> like, what? So, what's up with Spongebob and being in the shower with people? I don't know. He's been in the shower multiple times, though. Squidward has nightmares yeah. about Spongebob being in, like, the bath in the shower. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sums all right. up. So, <laughs> next, um... What do you have from here? So after that, SpongeBob goes over to Patrick's yeah, house, and Patrick wishes him luck and is like, Psh, "You already yeah. got it." And then they're like, "You know, what we're gonna do later. We're gonna go to Goofy Goober's ice cream party boat." Yes, and they're excited, um, and they sing a little bit of the Goofy Goober song, and like it's your first taste of this several times in the movie. Oh um, uh, yes, mm, yes, Chef's Kiss, great song. Okay. So we leave Patrick and we head on over to the two crusty crabs <laughs> that are right next to each other. Yeah, which doesn't make sense whatsoever. <laughs> and it's also labeled the crusty crab too, not even just another yeah. chain of the crusty crab, which is interesting. So, um, uh, Mr. Krabs is celebrating all of his success. He's being interviewed by Perch Perkins. Um, everyone's excited to have more Krabby Patties that are right next to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and Plankton is in the chum bucket. Very, very sad because he's never had one customer. And Mr. Krabs is being interviewed by Perch Perkins. Oh no, woe is Plankton. Plankton has tried every evil plan from plan A to Y. Yep. And Plankton's computer wife, Karen, comes by and she's like, A to Y? What about plan Z? And Z? Plankton's like, huh? Z? Z? What and do then you mean? plan Z, he finds it and he opens up the envelope and he says, it's evil. It's, it's diabolical. diabolical. It's, it's lemon-scented. Lemon -scented. <laughs> um, 
one of the best quotes in this movie. Um, so he is going to enact Plan Z. Yes. So now we head over to the Krusty Krab, and the um, the manager selecting process is beginning. They have this um, it's like the Hunger Games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have the stage set up, and Mr. Crabs is saying that this person deserves it. His name starts with an S. He you all know who he is. Know who he is. <laughs> it's Squidward. Squidward Tentacles. And SpongeBob gets up, and he's screaming. He's excited. He runs on the stage, and he's like giving everyone his thank you speech. <laughs> and this, I already thought this part was really funny. Mr. Crabs is whispering in his ear, um, yeah. and SpongeBob is repeating what he's saying to him. And he's like, "This is like the most embarrassing thing you've ever seen." <laughs> it's, it's really funny. Um, and then he finally realizes that oh. Good words, the manager, not me. Uh, yeah. So sad. Um, um, yeah, so SpongeBob is like, oh, well, why? And they're like, because you're just a kid. A barnacle head, a dummy, a stupid head. <laughs> I don't know. They, they call them all sorts of like, silly names, and then they're like, because you're just a kid. Um, so SpongeBob's sad. And yeah. um, as... The sadness is happening. We hear Patrick's voice in the background. And yay, he's, SpongeBob! Yay, SpongeBob! And he's flying through the sky. Naked. Naked. <laughs> totally <laughs> naked. Uh, and he has a flag in between his butt cheeks. Yeah. And Patrick's butt flag has been permanently burned into my brain since the first time I saw this. Same. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. We end this with Patrick destroying the stage because he lands on it and it's a mess. Alright, what do you have next? Um, so after this we get an inside look of King Neptune's kingdom. Yes. And we see the dynamic between him and his daughter Mindy. We love uh, Mindy. He is very um, quick to anger and judgment and she is very compassionate and yeah, understanding. Very um, um, so something about King Neptune before we get too far is that King Neptune has been in the series before, yes, before this yes. and he was like ripped. He had like a mega beard. Mm-hmm. He had like a full head of like hair. Glorious hair. Glorious hair. And in this movie, they made him ugly. They, they made him fat and he um, had no like are you saying fat people are no no, no 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 but they made him like you they made him very bald they gave him a dad bod they gave him a dad bod so they i was gonna say they they um you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> we can't say that <laughs> um so king neptune was this once glorious wonderful dude and now he is <laughs> of like a large fish <laughs> it's kind of sad um because i miss old king neptune and we don't see this version of king neptune again do we no yeah so interesting we do see the other version again we do yes. yeah so bald king neptune is who we are focusing on this time um so we are in um the castle and he he's talking to mindy about you see this crown on my head uh, it's very important. It covers up my bald. And at one point, he puts it down and he it goes covers to put, up my bald. <laughs> he goes to put the crown back on and he puts it on his head and it's a pillow. <gasps> Where did the crown go? Where's the crown? Oh no! So um, oh shoot. Yeah, we we that's pretty much where that scene wraps up. So we don't know where the crown is yet. So. We go to Goofy Goober's ice cream party boat, and all the children are sitting there and having a grand old time, and we pan over to the nut bar. The nut bar. <laughs> um, so SpongeBob is laying on the nut bar. He's sobbing. He's so sad, wearing his little Goofy Goober hat, and um, Patrick wanders in, and he's like, ooh, go SpongeBob. <laughs> and then eventually Patrick realizes, like, oh. He's not the manager, but whatever. Um, so Patrick's like, I want a triple Cooper Berry Sunrise. And Spongebob's like, oh, that looks good. I don't they called you a kid. <laughs> That's like calling me a kid. <laughs> Here's your meal, sir. Oh, I'm supposed to get a toy with this. <laughs> Thanks. That's um that's the joke of the other movie, that they're very, very much act like children. But they're yeah. like, no, we're men. Um, 
So they both start off with their first triple goober berry sunrise. Then it becomes another one and another one. Waiter! <laughs> um, it's a whole thing. So they get drunk off of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's really, really funny. So. Yeah, this whole scene is great. I think it's one of my favorite in the movie, for sure. Absolutely. Um... So Spongebob wakes up on the ground, um, and the guy's like, come on, it's 8 a.m., like, take your friend and get the heck out of here. Um, but it's 8 a.m., I'm late for work! <laughs> I'm late for work. <laughs> Spongebob looks ragged as heck. He has, like, a funny little hat on. He has an ice cream hangover. He has the Goofy Goober's hat on. Yeah. 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 Um... So he wakes up Patrick, um, and they um, go on their way. Yes. So we go back to the Krusty yes. Krab, and <gasps> King Neptune is arriving at the Krusty Krab. Mr. Krab is excited because he's like, why? <laughs> um, and he comes in, and he's like, uh, Krabs, why'd you steal my crown? Yes, I need to speak to Mr. Eugene Krabs. Um, and Mr. Krabs is like, what are you talking about? I didn't steal your crown. And King Neptune pulls out a handwritten note that says, <laughs> I stole your crown from Eugene Krabs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so obviously, we can, we can already tell now, like, uh-oh, we know Plankton's behind this. This is Plan Z. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, they find out the the crown is in Shell City. Shell City. And, um... Oh, yeah, some guy calls Mr. Krabs, which is also another Plankton setup, um, while Neptune was there, and is like, uh, hey, like, I got the, the crown to Shell City. Neptune's crown. Specifically Neptune's crown. <laughs> Neptune's crown. <laughs> it's really funny. Here in Shell City. <laughs> <laughs> Neptune's crown. <laughs> um, um, so, um... Yeah, so Neptune. then Mr. Krabs, Mr. Krabs is like, uh, no, anybody can vouch for me. I'm a good guy. And SpongeBob bursts in the in. door. He's this like, man has got something to say to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he starts off like saying like something nice and he's like, Ew. I used to think Mr. Krabs was the greatest boss ever. <laughs> So he disses Mr. Krabs in front of King Neptune, and he's like, alrighty, then, um, King Neptune, he, he, like, goes to, like, zap him or whatever. He's so, he's trying to kill Mr. Krabs and just send him into nothingness. Um, so at some point, um, I think King Neptune picks up Spongebob, and he's like, oh, do you want to see what's on, oh, King Neptune is wearing a bag on his head. We forgot to mention. He (laughs) takes the bag off of his head, and we see his beautiful, shining, bald head. Everyone in the vicinity is bald, 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 bald. <laughs> yeah. Um, so SpongeBob eventually is like, "Hey, never don't don't kill Mr. Krabs. Yeah. Um, I'll go and find your crown for you." And they're like, "Ha ha ha! You're, you're just, just a kid. kid." And he's like, "Um, I'm gonna go do it." Yeah. <laughs> so Mr. Krabs is frozen. Uh, King Neptune freezes him until that SpongeBob and Patrick return with the crown. Mm-hmm. So Mindy sends SpongeBob and Patrick off on a quest to Shell City. She is 100% she gives them there for them. A bag of wind yeah. so they can fly back home mm-hmm. whenever they get the crown. So um, SpongeBob and Patrick go outside and they get in a car that we haven't seen in the series up to this point, and I don't think we see it ever. No, again. we do not. It's called the Patty Wagon. The Patty Wagon. And it's super Bro, cute. this is making me so hungry for a burger right now. Um. Like unbelievably hungry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, w- the, the last thing that happens, like, in the scene is Mr. Krabs is frozen, and Plankton steals the formula while he's frozen, <gasps> and he's bragging about it to him, and he just takes it and goes off, and that is where we end this scene. So after they get the paddy wagon, we see him trucking along, like, driving along, <laughs> and they go- get to this gas station, <laughs> and they're like, fill her up. And there are these like... two guys at the gas station, and every time that they think something is funny, they just, like, slap their knees really hard, and it's hilarious. Um, so, um, they, they're like, fill her up, and they're like, where are you going? We're, we're going to Shell City. And they're like, you won't make it ten seconds over the county line. <laughs> and they're I... like, oh, yeah, yeah, watch us. And they so drive over the county line, 
and a guy steals their car. <laughs> like, immediately. He, like, <laughs> is like, yo, get out of the car. It was really funny. And SpongeBob and Patrick are like, how long was that? And they're like, 12, 12 seconds. seconds. And they're like, in your face. <laughs> um, um, so we go back to the Krusty Krab. And we see Plankton at the Chum Bucket. And he is selling Krabby, Krabby patties, patties at the McFrickin Chum Bucket. Uh-huh. And Perch Perkins is interviewing him. And Plankton comes up with this sob story. I think story. Plankton has a crush on Perch Perkins. <laughs> Plankton has this sob story. And he's like, oh, the last thing Mr. Krabs asked of me was to take the secret formula and to sell Krabby Patties in his absence. Boo-hoo. Um, so... One thing Plankton's doing is that he's selling bucket hats with all yeah. of the meals um, at the Chum Bucket. Mm-hmm. So this is like a big thing for right now. So we go back to Sponge and Pat. <laughs> well, before that, um, Plankton goes back and talks with Karen. And oh, yes. they're like, and she's like, hey, Spongebob and Patrick are going to get the crown. And he's mm-hmm. like, ah, don't worry about them. So we see that he sent a bounty hunter after them. Yes. Yeah. I forgot about this guy. <laughs> um. Spongebob and Patrick um, are walking along, and they're like, we're never going to make it there. It's five days drive from here to Shell City, yeah. and they have a six-day limit to get back. Um, so they they see their car parked in a parking lot. At the Thug Tug. The Thug Tug. Yes. And it's this really scary bar. Um, so they're like, okay, what if we just go in and steal our key back? And you hear people screaming inside and, like, dying. <laughs> so they go inside the Thug Tug. Um, and they're trying to come up with a plan to make a, a diversion or a distraction so Spongebob can steal, um, the key from the, the big old dude who took their car. Mm-hmm. Um, and Patrick, he gets up and he's like, I have, like, an announcement to make. <laughs> <laughs> um, and here Spongebob is, like, crouched over trying to grab the key and he's like, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and they point him to where the bathroom is and Spongebob's frustrated, obviously, because, like, bruh, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, so they're in the bathroom, and Spongebob is like, great, I got my hands dirty for nothing. <laughs> Patrick's like, oh, I had to use the bathroom, though. <laughs> um, so, so Spongebob starts to use a soap dispenser, and a bunch of bubbles just start flying out of the soap dispenser. And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, bubbles! Bubbles! So they start having a bubble party in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And a uh, bubble makes its way out of the bathroom, and yes. the thugs all see it, and they're like... Who blew this bubble? <laughs> Who is the bubble blowing babies? Yeah. So, um, SpongeBob and Patrick pop all the bubbles in their <laughs> they're vicinity, very scared. It's and really funny. um, they're like, they're like, all bubble blowing babies will be beaten senseless, senseless. by every able body in the bar. <laughs> um, I don't know how I remembered all that, but anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So SpongeBob and Patrick try to. Well, I don't know why I... Okay, never mind. Um, Spongebob and Patrick try and sneak out of the bar, but they're like, hey, you! <laughs> they line everyone up, and they're like, we're gonna spot the bubble-blowing babies yeah. so they can beat you senseless. <laughs> don't think we don't know how to weed them out. <laughs> <laughs> so they get the stereo and the bar hooked up to play the Goofy Goober theme song. <gasps> Oh no. So they're blasting the Goofy Goober song and Spongebob and Patrick are very visibly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know why they weren't just like, yeah, it's definitely you guys. <laughs> right? Like, they, they look like the bubble blowing babies. So They don't fit in. Mm-mm. Like, So, right when Spongebob and Patrick are about to start singing, these other guys start <sighs> singing and they're the bubble blowing babies and they get beaten senseless. Yeah. So during the commotion, Spongebob grabs the key, and they yeet no, on out. No, Patrick oh, Sorry, the yeah, key. Patrick grabs the key, and they yeet on out. Um, yeah, they narrowly escape, and then we go back to Bikini Bottom, yes. and the uh, s- bucket. Squidward is, like, biking around, and yeah. he's like, where did everybody get these hats from? Yeah, and, and then one lady is like... The chum bucket. The chum bucket. They come with every Krabby Patty meal. And he's like, like, Krabby Patty. Where has Squidward been? Right. He's so he was basically in charge of both of the Krusty Krabs right now because Mr. Krabs is frozen. Yeah. 
Um, and the Krusty Krab is right across the street from the Chum Bucket, so wouldn't you think he, he knew? How he missed all the signs saying that the Chum Bucket's now saving Krabby Patties? I have no idea. Yeah. So he ends up going to the Chum Bucket, and he's like, Plankton, he I heard you're selling him. Krabby Patties. And uh, <laughs> Plankton's like, yep. And they all come with the bucket hat. Mm-hmm. And Plankton presses this button and the bucket hat start to mind control everybody yes. so squidward is very upset he's confronting plankton and he's like hey i'm only upset because this concerns my paycheck yeah um so he's gonna try to take care of it and get plankton to stop saving Krabby patties and the bucket hats become these mind control devices and they all surround squidward and they put a bucket on his head oh, yeah no. squidward. Squidward. <laughs> so we go back to spongebob and patrick and they see an ice cream stand. Surrounded by skulls. Oh, boy. So they, they're like, ice cream. So they wander in to go get ice cream. And this little lady is serving ice cream. And Patrick's still in the car. And Patrick, this was my favorite part in the movie, <laughs> watching it this time. He's, like, just chilling, like, very casually. And he spots one of the skulls on the ground. And he's like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> like, me too. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Um, so, Spongebob's going to get them ice cream, and he grabs one from the old lady's hand, and he gets stuck to it, and she starts getting all gooey and weird. And he's like, what kind of old lady are you? <laughs> um, so the ice cream stand turned out to be a trap. It yes. was actually part of the tongue of some kind of creature. Giant monster. And yeah. it starts chasing them. So they start, like, driving away from it, mm-hmm. and, um... Well, they lose their car again. Yep. <laughs> this is the second time we've lost the car. Um, so, oof. <laughs> um, so It falls down into this, like, abyss. Yes. Uh, along with the monster. The monster, like... Mm-hmm. It's like this big, like, ravine kind of, like... Yeah. Hole. Yeah. And it's filled with monsters. And yes. they're like, what are we going to do? Because the road is on the other side mm-hmm. um, to Shell City. And Patrick finds a staircase, and he's like, oh, we'll just walk down the stairs. It'll be fine, but... Spongebob is over it. He's like, nah. Yeah. Um, Spongebob accepts his defeat, and he's like... We're just kids. Let's and go home. He looks at Patrick, um, and he's like, we worship a giant peanut. And Patrick says, we, we do, do not, not worship it. <laughs> And then Spongebob, like, pulls down his pants and is like, look at your underwear. Like, it's got Goofy Goober all over it. Mm -hmm. So, they're children. They love Goofy Goober. They are bubble-loving babies. And they're they're proud. So, Um, Mindy arrives. Mindy arrives. And, well, Patrick starts running away with his pants around his ankles. (laughs) And he falls over. And he just starts sobbing on the ground. And Spongebob is like, let's go home, Patrick. I give up. And then Mindy arrives. And she's like, you can't give up. And Patrick, like, Patrick has a crush on Mindy. And so he, like, quickly pulls his pants up. And he's like, did you see everything? And she's like, not really. And he's like, did you see my underwear? And she's like, no. And he's like, did you you want want to? to? (laughs) Uh, I think either earlier in the movie that we forgot to talk about he like looks at Mindy and he's like you're hot (laughs) yeah really funny um Um, so Mindy is like you can't leave like uh, she shows them everything that's going on in Bikini Bottom and mm -hmm. like or Planktopolis now Planktopolis Plankton has taken over yeah uh yeah even Gary has bucket hats on which yeah. how did that happen I don't know who knows they broke into Spongebob's house who was taking care of Gary this whole time I don't know and Gary's the only pet that has bucket hats on as well yeah. what, I guess I mean we we have seen throughout the series that Gary is more sentient and like yeah capable of things than we than we think um so they're like um she's like you just gotta believe and Spongebob's like I believe mm-hmm Believe. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, it's like, yeah, no, never mind. Yeah. Um, so Mindy, she makes them believe that they are men, and she gives them these like little like kelp like beards and goatees, uh, or goatees and mustaches. Yeah. And um, they're like, and they're like, we're, we're men. men, we're invincible, <laughs> and they jump off of the cliff into the ravine. <laughs> She's like, I never said you guys were invincible. Yeah. Um, so they start singing a song now that we're men and Bob. man is this a good song. Great. Um 
So they think they're invincible. They're making it through the trench. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any notes about the song? Because I don't have very much. Not really. Okay. It's, so it's they get out of the bra. trench. <laughs> they get out of the trench. And they're like, Shell City, dead ahead. And they start walking. <gasps> but guess who they run into? Dennis, the Dennis. bounty hunter. Dennis, he like, rolls up on his motorcycle. He's got boots that, like, his boots say, head, your head goes here. Like, yeah. um, he's funny. Um, the back of the license plate on his motorcycle says, I kill you. Um, so Dennis means business. <laughs> There's a license plate that lives in our town, mm-hmm. like our hometown, that it says, I cut you. Like, like legitimately. Oh I've gosh. seen it so many times. That's funny. And it freaks me out every time. Um, so, Dennis tries to step on them with his boot, <laughs> yes. which is hilarious. But, oh wait, before that, he's like, you guys got some sa- leftover salad on your face. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, no, these are our mustaches. And he's like, no, they're not. And he, he just, like, off. rips them off. He's like, this is a mustache. And he pulls down his bandana. He's got this big fluffy mustache. <laughs> um yeah so anyway dennis starts to like step on them with his boot but then bigger boot steps on him it's the cyclops it's the cyclops that guard shell city and the cyclops takes them away yeah he picks them up and takes them off so the cyclops is actually a diver um Mm. so this is a human person and not a cyclops yeah um and this is a live action person as well Mm -hmm. so the diver takes them to Shell City. <gasps> what is Shell City? A gift shop. A gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the diver is trying to turn SpongeBob and Patrick into a, like something to like sell. Like novelty mm-hmm. gifts. So, he has them under a lamp to dry them out. Yeah. <laughs> saddest, uh, top 10 saddest anime deaths of all time. <gasps> I wrote that down in my notes. <laughs> This part used to make me so sad. This part is so sad. They're, like, just helpless. Yeah. And they're just sitting there, they're and they're, like, it. dying. And then Patrick is, like, Shell City. And he's, like, and Spud probably, like, you know, we never made it to Shell City. Shell City. No. Shell City. And they realize that the gift shop is Shell City. Yeah. And over in the distance, they see Neptune's crown. So then they finally have this realization that, oh, they did make it. They mm-hmm. can die happy now. Yes. And Neptune's as... crown is only what, like seven dollars, I think. Yeah, it was listed for seven dollars, which is really funny. Um. So, as they have like this happy realization while they're dying, mm-hmm. um, SpongeBob starts to break out into the Goofy Goober song one last time, <laughs> and so Patrick sad. joins him as they dry up, and they both have a single tear. Mm-hmm. go down their faces and it's very sad and during this we cut back to the movie theater with the pirates mm-hmm. in it and they're all sobbing yeah. and they're like what's going on this is the end of spongebob <laughs> but wait the tear of the goofy goobers it's there it formed a heart yeah oh, and then so sad. <laughs> and then as they're like dead basically yeah they're dry um, <laughs> they are crusty <laughs> The tear goes into the light socket Mm -hmm. and, like, shorts out the circuit and smoke comes out of it. And it sets off the water thingies. The sprinklers. The sprinklers in the store. So now they're rehydrated. It's no longer the end of SpongeBob. Um, Um, Yeah, so they go over to the crown. Mm Mm-hmm. And they're like, okay, on three, one, two, three. And they're like, hey, this is a lot. (laughs) <laughs> this is a lot lighter than I thought it would be, but the Cyclops picked it up, and the, and yeah. the Cyclops is like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. But then all of the other dried-up animals come in the store come alive and rehydrated. Um, they all have googly eyes. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful. They uh, All the other sea creatures end up um, taking down the Cyclops as SpongeBob and Patrick escape with the crown. Yeah. So they're they on, the it out on the beach. <laughs> And they're like, oh, yeah, the bag of wins. We got to use that to get back. So SpongeBob is reading the instructions and Patrick is doing the instructions (laughs) and accidentally lets go the bag of wind. Yeah. So the bag of wind is gone. Yeah. Um, And they (laughs) they don't know how to get back to Bikini Bottom. How are they going to get back? (laughs) We may never know. So at this point in the movie, I hear Julia whisper in the distance. (laughs) 
I I about died. I was like laughing so hard. I was crying. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so funny. Um <sighs> yes, David Hasselhoff himself. Uh this is so weird, but yeah. Shows up and is like, hey, what's up? And they're like, we gotta get back to Bikini Bottom. And he's like, okay. <laughs> So they get on his back and, and he, he like swims super fast. Like swims, but like he's not moving his arms, he's not moving his legs, he's just like Blinding. zooming. Like what? <laughs> so um oh my gosh. Does anything uh um, back of wins, well, Hasselhoff. He swims them back home. Um and they're like, Oh, now we gotta get down to bikini bottom and he can't like well take them there. So he's got to, like, launch him. <laughs> well, before that, we see Dennis again. Yes. Yeah, I forgot about Dennis. Dennis comes back, and he's like, I'm going to step on you. And um, and eventually Dennis gets oofed, and that's yeah. the end of him. Uh, while all of this is going on, we do flash back to the Krusty Krab, and Neptune has arrived mm-hmm. to disintegrate, disintegrate crabs. crabs. So Neptune is there to fry crabs, <laughs> and <laughs> and then like there's like this countdown or whatever. Right. And he's like you're gonna die, and in between like the countdown and things, we go back to SpongeBob, and they're like, how are we gonna float to the bottom mm-hmm. in time? And Hasselhoff is like, float, ha ha ha. So Hasselhoff. He, like, stings his up. pecs. Yeah. And he squeezes he... them in there so hard that they just get launched back down <laughs> through the Krusty Krab. So, they're in the Krusty Krab, and um, they return the crown, and everything's all good, and we think that crab's going to be melted, and it's all great. But surprise, <gasps> Plankton has a has... king size bucket hat. Yes. For King Neptune. So, Neptune has a bucket on his head, and then all the bucket zombies show up, and it's, like, this, like, thing. And SpongeBob gets all sad, and he gives this big old speech about being a kid after Plankton's, like, you like, couldn't have yeah. done anything. You're just a kid. So, You're right. I am a kid. But you know what else I am? I'm. I'm. I'm what's going on? I'm. I'm the Goofy, goofy Goober Rock. Dun, 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 so we get dun, dun, to the Goofy Goober Rock and SpongeBob becomes the Goofy Goober Wizard. And yes. he's hoisted up on these like ropes and he's got a guitar and he's like going all at it. And, <gasps> and Patrick. Through the power of the Goofy Goober. Yeah. And Rock. He. He blasts, disintegrates all the bucket heads. Yeah, he blasts all the bucket heads. Patrick comes out with these, like, fishnets and, like, giant boots and, like... What a queen. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> um, and everything is good. So SpongeBob gets rid of all of it, and then um, the bucket heads are no longer. Yeah. And Neptune unfreezes crabs. Um, Plankton, Plankton gets sent to jail. Yeah, he gets shoveled into a jail cell because he gets <laughs> crushed by all the people stomping on him. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Krabs is like, you know what? You should be manager. Mm-hmm. And SpongeBob becomes the manager. And it's so nice. And we end on a freeze frame of SpongeBob jumping, and then we hear, Ocean, Ocean Man, take me by the hand, lead me to the, the land. land. The best. <laughs> The best outro for this movie is the song itself, Ocean Man. Yeah. And yeah, that's the Spongebob movie. That's the Spongebob movie. It's a trip. Um, some interesting facts. I I haven't watched this movie in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, two of the voices in the movie sounded so familiar. And I was like, where do we know these from? So Mindy is played by Scarlett Johansson. That I had no idea. I was like, and oh. uh, Dennis is voiced by Alec Baldwin. Hmm. So I thought both of those were very interesting Mm -hmm. that i had to share that um (laughs) this is a good movie it's currently available on showtime if you that's what we watched on Mm -hmm. uh because with a a spotify student plan you get showtime and hulu and yeah spotify so we have showtime um yeah go watch it it's good (laughs) (laughs) it's a great movie oh this one job movie is just like I don't know. It's just, like, fun. Just pure fun. Like, none yeah. of it makes any sense. It's stupid, but it's, like, fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's a good movie to watch, like, if you're sad. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's all. Um, yeah. I think that's all I have about it. All right. So. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Um, oh, after the credits, we see the pirates leave the movie oh, yeah. theater. <laughs> they go, they're, like, the last ones in there, and the usher is like, uh, you guys have to Go. Yeah. <laughs> so they leave. 
Um, I wish I would have, like, went back to the pirates more often in this movie. Because you kind of forget about them after yeah, a while. Yeah, I, I forgot the pirates were in the movie until, like, the end. It's like, oh, yeah, the pirates. <laughs> um, I feel like they could have utilized that, like, a lot more. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they did, and they just, like, didn't have time to put it in the movie. Because mm-hmm. people are there for SpongeBob. But... True. Anyway, that's the movie. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to take another break, and then we'll be back with the end. The game. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. What are we playing today, Lily? We are playing the aesthetic game again. Woo-hoo. That's what we're, I guess we're calling it now. Yeah. Um, so I picked four topics for us this time. Um, nice. Yes. Exciting. So let's begin. The first topic. Flowers. What kind of flower would we be? (sighs) Would you like to go? The one that grows out of the ground. Uh. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Um, I think, um, a rose. A rose. Yep, that's all I gotta say. I think you would be a sunflower. A sunflower. A sunflower. (laughs) Because I'm so happy all the time. Oh, boy. All right. Um, the next category I have are animals. 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 Mm. Mm. I'll go first this time since okay. you went. I think you would be a majestic horse trotting through a field living your best life. <laughs> <laughs> I want a horse girl there. <laughs> Um, you would be a deer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was, like, wholeheartedly expecting you to say I would be a cat. Really? Because I relate with cats. Huh. Okay. I was actually between a dog or a horse. Interesting. Yeah. I could see how you could be a cat, too. Okay. The next category uh, uh, is desserts. So... Um, what you got? This one is hard. <laughs> uh, what are desserts? desserts? Are lots of things. There are pies, cakes, cupcakes, and brownies and stuff. Um, a mm. strawberry shortcake. That makes sense. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> um, I was thinking maybe like. Um, either, like, cookie dough something or some kind of, like, brownie, like, sundae or something like that. I feel like that kind of fits. Interesting. Okay. The last category (laughs) is who do you look like you'd main in Mario Kart? So. Well, I know you main Daisy, but you look like you would main Peach. Like, I remember the day I found out you main Daisy and I was like, no. (laughs) <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Daisy has always been my favorite princess. <laughs> that doesn't it, make it any looks sense like I'd be to a me. Peach person. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Um, well, obviously, you're the queen herself, baby Daisy. Because, duh. Um, that is, I feel like um, that is that's who what I, I know mean. you mean. Yeah, but what but do I look like you. I mean? But does I it... think you'd look like you'd mean. I kind of sarcastically play baby Daisy. Really? Yeah. I think you look like you could mean um, Rosalina. Because I'm so hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you could be a Rosalina girl. Or, you know, how you're playing baby Daisy for the meme. Mm-hmm. Maybe you would be like a Waluigi stand or something like that. <laughs> I would, though. <laughs> but that's what Marty means. Yeah. Or Luigi, either one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that works. Yeah, I think Rosalina was like, probably what you look like. You'd, you'd main, but baby Daisy all the way. Yeah. Okay. People that's hate on the babies, and I don't understand that. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is a little weird that babies are driving. It is, <laughs> but that's just what makes them even cooler. <laughs> um. Yeah. The babies always confuse me. Like, they're in the same universe as the not babies. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, <gasps> what if it's, like, clone high and they <laughs> just took parts of these? Oh, my um, gosh. Uh, uh, 
Mario's and Luigi's and Luigi's? Peaches. They just took parts of them clones? and they like cloned them. So, so they're clones. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Do we have any questions or shout outs today? We have three shout outs today. <gasps> oh boy. Uh, these shout outs are for sharing our podcast and all the podcasty things on their social media. So make sure you continue to do that uh, so that we can grow our podcasty family Yay. and have funds. Yes. Uh, so we can continue to do this. Because um, when we have low numbers, I get very discouraged. Yes. So. Here are the shout outs. Shout out number one goes to Haley Ebanks. Woof, 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 woof. I love you, Bean. I miss you. <laughs> our next shout out goes to our friend Morgan. Woof, 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 woof. And our final shout out goes to our friend Madison, who binged watch half of our series this weekend. Woof, 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 woof. Yeah, that is a real, she's a real MVP for like listening to us talk for several hours. <laughs> I couldn't. Nope. <laughs> I find myself very annoying. Mood. Yeah, I could never. I don't know how you guys are listening. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's all I have. Mm -hmm. Me too. Stay tuned for next week. Oh, yeah. When I shall be talking about Taylor Swift a lot. It's going to be a very Taylor Swift-centric episode. I'm I am going to do my best to make the entire episode somewhat Taylor swift theme. I am afeard. <laughs> do not be afeard. <laughs> Um, Mookie is here. <laughs> so that is all we have for today. Yes. Yes. Cool. So um, make sure to go, go to check out Insta. our Insta at Pop Culturing My BFF underscore podcast. We'll put the songs there and some pictures um, from the episode. Yes. yes. Um, we also have updates there, announcements, all the mm -hmm. things. So go like, share, do all the things. Okay. Um, good night. Good night. <laughs>Thank you for joining us this week on Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Tune in next time when we talk about more stuff and things. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at popculturingmybff_podcast underscore podcast for behind the scenes content and more.